Okay, I'm going to break this painting down into easier to follow steps than you might imagine so that you can have a go, follow along and amaze yourself. Okay, so as I explained in the intro, I'm going to break this tutorial down into easy to follow steps so that you'll learn not only about the painting techniques, but also about this app. Procreate. Now, although I am using the app Procreate, I don't see any reason why you can't use a different app on a different tablet and still follow along and achieve some success. In terms of this app, though, I'm using a square canvas for a change, which is 394 millimeters by 394 millimeters, or it might tell you in your information 2048 pixels by 2048 pixels. And it's the default one, so it happens to have it at 132 dpi. In terms of the brushes, I'm just going to be using the brushes that come free with the app Procreate. So with an airbrushing, I'm likely to be using the soft brush, medium brush, and maybe the hard brush. Within painting, I'm going to use this old brush. Within artistic, I might use the leatherwood brush. Within spray paints, I might use the flix brush. Within organic, I might use the rainforest brush. And then last of all, within water, I might use a couple of different techniques, but probably the wet sponge and maybe some of the splash and flick brushes, but we'll see. In terms of the colors, I've already pre-selected a color palette. Now each of these colors has linked to it a code called a hexadecimal code. You go to the value section here, and you can type it into this box, one code at a time, press enter, the color will appear up here, and then you can tap it together and recreate the palette for yourself. Each of these color codes is down in the video description, so you can take a note of them, or next to them is a link that takes you to my Patreon page and you can download the whole color file for free to save you some time. And that's also where you can gain access to extended versions of these tutorials and exclusive content, and obviously support the channel. And with all of that said and done, we're going to get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my colors, first color, and I'm gonna drag from that color circle into the canvas and flood fill the whole canvas. I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to stay on the same layer, layer one. I'm going to go to the next color on the top row. I'm going to go to the airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to put the brush at 70% size and 100% opacity. I'm going to aim it for the center, but slightly up of that point. I'm going to tap that in maybe three times. Then adjustments, Gaussian blur. I'm just going to blur it in slightly, but not too much. About 10% will do. Then I'm going to go to my layers, click on the plus symbol to create a new layer. I'm going to go back to my colors. I'm going to use the third color on the top row, still with the airbrushing soft brush, but 70% now seems like too much. I'm going to turn it down to about 40%, still at 100% opacity. Aim for that slightly upper central area. Tap that in maybe five times. Adjustments. Gaussian blur, blur that in more significantly this time, maybe about 30%. And we're just creating some transitions of different colors, then that'll make the rest of what we plan to do a little easier. So I'm gonna create a new layer on top, layer three. I'm gonna to go to my brushes, I'm gonna to go to the painting, old brush, I'm gonna to go to my colors, and I'm gonna choose the fourth color on the top row. I'm gonna put the brush size at around 6%, Capacity at around 40% and just kind of around this circle now. Now it depends on how you press. I'm going to press a variety. So sometimes I press a bit more, sometimes a bit less. And I'm just going to create a kind of circular area. So I can do this all the way around. I can allow this to sort of spiral into the center area too. And outwards of that as well. And then in towards the center, something like this. I'm going to go back to the brush. I'm going to put it up to 10%. And again, maybe on the outer areas, just concentrate a little bit more. In these upper corners, just brush over it a few times, like so. We can remove sections of this, so we don't need to be too precious about it. I'm just sort of lightly scribbling in to fill in some of these different areas. Then, I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to blur that in to so about the five, sorry, about the four percent. Then I'm going to go to the eraser, tap on it again. I'm going to put it on the soft brush with an airbrushing. 
I'm going to have it down at 2% size and about 40% opacity. Zoom in a touch. And then within some of these areas, I just want to create some kind of ellipses and breaks in these shapes. So if I zoom in a touch more, perhaps you'll be able to see more clearly what I'm doing. Now it's just to create a kind of texture of turbulence in water. So if I was to find a, a clearer area, perhaps like this, I might just go in and create something of an ellipse and another one nearby, another one here, and another one here. And then you can zoom out and it just creates that kind of appropriate texture for water and churn. Now we don't want it all completely packed together. You don't need to completely uniformly do them. We can space them apart, have them quite randomly situated. Move over to another section. So a few larger ones, for example, and then quite a lot of smaller ones too. Shouldn't take very long. I'm just going in there, just finding any area where we've got a large concentration of a light tone and just maybe positioning one of these ellipses kind of to break break it up really. But generally, I'm just sort of tapping in this texture as well. It just starts to disturb and move it around. Not overly considered. I'm going to create another layer, layer four. Still with this fourth color, I'm going to go in with something more like the airbrushing soft brush. The lowest part of 2% and low on the opacity too, it's around 10%. And I can just zoom in and you can just use this to bring out some highlights. So look for the shapes that are already there. And all you need to do is just bring out some of those lines and forms a little bit, not uniformly, you don't need to do it all over. So you can exaggerate some of these ellipses now by almost just highlighting the, the wash and the the churn of the water a little bit more in places but it's just subtle you don't need to do a great deal of it and really we're not actually adding anything new as such we're just bringing out kind of what's being suggested there anyway we're just being pretty subtle perhaps i'll even turn that down from the 10 percent to the five percent opacity zoom in a touch more and perhaps even turn the brush down to one percent as well and we can continue to add some more of these of this texture We've got the, the bigger shapes there where you start to notice those gaps, but then perhaps as we draw closer towards that center, we get less of that and we just get more of these kind of stretches of lines that close together and just, yeah, smooth out into almost nothing. I've done that side. Let's do some more over here as well. Zoom back out. They don't need to be overly detailed at this stage. We will come back to more of this texture later on. But I'm going to create a new layer, layer five. On this layer, I'm going to go to the airbrushing hard brush. I'm going to put it really quite small, 1% and 100% opacity. And I'm going to use probably my first color again, which is pretty much just a straightforward black. It's just a hint more color than that, but almost black. I'm going to draw a circle. It doesn't have to be neat. Try and get it as most like a circle as possible. Tap on that little arrow, change it to a circle. Try and just sort of guesstimate where the, the center is. And if you want to change the scale, just don't drag it by the little blue circle there. Just drag it from the line and you can change the scale. So I want to keep a reasonable distance either side, a little less nearer the top. I can always change this a little later, but that will do. Tap outside of the circle and deselects. Then I'm going to just zoom in a touch, try and figure out where the edge of that circle is, the outer kind of point, and then draw a line down from there. And if you hold it, it should snap to a straight line anyway. Now, if you're not sure whether you, you are entirely getting this vertical, then we could easily go to the wrench, canvas, drawing guide, and you can see it's put a grid on there for us. Deselect that wrench, and you should be able to use that just as a rough guide to help you get those lines. I mean, you could even, I suppose, use it for repositioning the circle. So if I just nudge it that way, it's more likely to just be positioned on an actual line anyway. Now, I can pretty much judge where it is. I've just gone past the line, so I'll do that all the way down. Hold it so it snaps to a straight line where I think it should be. Maybe just zoom in a bit more. I want to extend that line a little bit further. And when it snaps to a straight line, you can continue moving it so that it lines up. I'm going to go to that layer just in the effort of saving time. Duplicate it. Top version. I will go to the transform and flip it horizontally. 
And because of the circle, that should be completely lined up on the other side, like so. Take the top version, tap on it, merge it down. And it's all in one layer. I'm going to go in with the eraser, and the eraser set to the airbrushing hard brush. Have it quite small at 2%, 100% opacity, and just remove the bits of the line that we really don't need. It's not going to matter a great deal in a moment because I'm going to flood fill anyway, but it just means that you won't have any of those little anomalies when we flood fill it. The bottom edge isn't closed, so what we could do, I suppose, is just take that bottom line and just take it to the very bottom. We're going to delete some of this later, so it doesn't matter. And that just closes the shape. Then I can take that black color, drag it to flood fill that shape. At this point, I'm going to go to the wrench and turn off the drawing guide. We don't need it anymore. Zoom in. I'm going to take that layer and I'm going to duplicate it. On the top version, I'm going to tap on it, put on alpha lock, which means that when I add a different color now, I can only add it up until the edge of that shape and it won't extend beyond the boundary. I'm going to go in with the airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to put it pretty big. It's around 40%. 100% opacity. I'm going to go back to my colors. I'm going to choose the second color from the end. And I'm just going to add that color to the top. And I'm also going to go to the color on the very end. So 40% down to 20%. And again, just in that area there. We have alpha lock on. So that means we can also go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur. And I can blur those together without blurring the, the outer edge at all. So I'm going to blur them to about 50%. I'm going to take this, I'm going to take the bottom version and I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to blur that in to about the 4%. And when you zoom in, you'll see that it's just given us a little bit of a darker outline now because that bottom version has just spread a little bit and it just creates a little bit of a dark line around the edge, which is exactly what I wanted. Okay, back to the top version. I'm going to slide and duplicate it. Again, the top version, I'm going to turn off the alpha lock and I'm going to go to the adjustments, hue, saturation, and brightness. I'm going to turn the brightness down to about 45%. So it has made it considerably darker. And then I'm going to go to the transform. Uniform is important so we don't distort it. And I'm going to just take it from one corner then the next, just deselect and then move it up so we can see what we're doing. Transform again, pinch it in from another corner and another one and just look for the outer edges try and make them the same on both sides as much as possible and we want to keep it that kind of edging looking as similar as possible all the way around so just to a certain extent you've got to judge it by eye and then deselect you need to do it anymore still press the transform deselect have a look at it is it looking right everywhere if it's not just nudge it from another corner until you're completely happy with it. And obviously you can shuffle it around too. Okay, so I'm roughly happy with that. On that top version, I'm aware now that it doesn't really extend to the bottom. It's not such a big deal. And go back in with the black and hard brush. Still at, well, it's a 1% size, 100% opacity. And we're just closing this up. And then we can flood fill. Now it might be that it extends that boundary. So just keep your Apple Pencil on the screen. If you slide it that way, it fills too much. Slide it backwards and it will just fill it the appropriate amount. Okay, I'm going to take layer five again, one underneath that, and slide and duplicate it. I'm going to take one of them and put it on the very top. And again, with the transform still on uniform, we're going to, I'm going to just pinch it in initially. I'm going to place this within that shape. Now, I want to position this so it leads, leaves a really thin line. I want it to be very slight. You can see it there at the top of a deselect and you can see it there all the way around. But even that I feel is too much and you can see it's slightly thinner on that side than the other. So we just want to nudge it so it's an incredibly slight gap. And we've got uniform as our setting so it shouldn't distort it. And you can see it's thinner on that side. So select it again, just keep nudging it around until you feel you've got it just right. I'm happy with that. It's a really thin line and that's I think it's important. Okay, in the interest of simplicity, I'm gonna take those top three layers and just pinch them together. So they're all on one layer now, but we have a background dark layer underneath it. 
that top version. I'm going to slide and duplicate it again. I'm going to go to the adjustments, hue, saturation and brightness and just turn the brightness up initially just so we can see a difference. 255, deselect, back to the transform and again we're going to pinch this in from each corner, move it up. You could get away with just doing it from one corner frankly. You know, I just tend to pinch it in from a couple of corners because it just helps me get a sense of keeping it central and then pinching in. But it doesn't really matter. You can just do it entirely from one corner in and out and then just reposition it. Now, what I'm looking for is the distance between this thin black line and this lighter area. So I'm looking for the thickness of that line between there and there. And I want that consistent all the way around. Now, I want it to be a bit thinner than between there and there. Let's deselect, see what we've got. I think that looks about right. So on this top version, we still have alpha lock on, which is perfect. We're going to go to the, well, we'll go to the soft brush, go to the colors, go to this color at the very end. It's at 20% size, 100% opacity. I'm just going to put it into this color initially. And I'm also just blank out what we've got. And we can see there that it does stop short of the other things. Shouldn't matter because we're going to add other things and details that overlap it. So I'm not too concerned about that. But there, just makes it a bit simpler to understand. I'm also going to use a lighter colour, so I'm going to go in with perhaps something like the third colour on the bottom row. Still with the soft brush, with an airbrushing, 10% size, 100% opacity, and I'm just going to add some of it over on this side. Stop when it kind of gets to the upper arch. I'm okay with it coming down here as well. Down to about 10%, just a little bit of it coming in here as well, but not as much. Go to the adjustments. Gaussian blur and blur it in about 20%. Then with this top version, I'm going to slide and duplicate. Once more, I'm going to go to the adjustments, hue saturation and brightness, and just turn that really quite significantly down to about 30%. Back to the transform, make this smaller. And I want to create, as you can probably see here, just a nice thin shape. If I deselect that, you'll see it a bit better. So I want that really nice bright colour coming in now. It's just starting to give this a little bit of a, a 3D sense of shape and form. Back to the transform. Now our job is to try and make sure that's consistent now. Move it around. Check the edges. That looks about right. Happy with that. Ignore the black one. Go to the back to the one underneath it and slide and duplicate. Take the top version and put it on the very top again. Just drag then back to the transform and we want to go beyond the the black now to create another light shape nudge it up reduce it nudge it and i want to reduce that new little black line to be really slim really thin a bit like the one we had up here but perhaps not quite as thin okay happy with that we're going to take the black version slide and duplicate it put it on the very top transform Reduce it in size, so then we're creating another. We've got a light colour, a black colour, and another light colour, but we just need to position that so we're getting it on all sides. Again, just a little bit fiddly, but the effect will be worth it. So bear with it. And that looks about right, I think. So it's been a bit fiddly on the layers, but it's got us to the stage where we've got these multi kind of layered versions of this doorway, which by any other means would be pretty tricky. So we've got there. We've got this black version on top. Use the selection on automatic and just grab the center of it. You've got it on the slider, so just do it as far this way so it doesn't flood the whole canvas. Then on the layer underneath it, tap on it, tap on it again and clear. Back to the top layer, do the same thing again. Selection, automatic, go back to the next layer now. Tap on it twice, clear. Now this is a bit of a laborious process, but it just means that we're going to get rid of the center area. You'll see what that does in just a moment so selection automatic select the center area on the top layer and then go back to the next layer that we haven't cleared the middle on that one tap on it again clear and you can see it's turning off the alpha lock back to the top version selection grab that center area back to the layers this one down here tap on it again clear top version selection automatic grab that middle and then back to this initial layer five tap on it again and clear and in order to achieve all of this this top layer was just our kind of reference layer and if i turn it off now you can see that we've got this archway and a clear view through 
which is exactly what we need. So that layer we probably don't even really need, so we'll slide and delete that top version now. And now you can see the effect of that arch doorway. Now it's useful to have them on the separate layers. If you just go along and you can untick them and see exactly what you've got on what layer, it just can be quite useful. Like for example, on this background layer, we can slide and duplicate it. I can just make that little shadow around the edge a little stronger, which I think benefits. But we will merge them back together so we've not got too many layers again. I'm going to take all of these background layers behind the doorway, merge them together. On this layer 5, I'm going to use the selection tool again, grab the middle of it, go back to my layers, go back to this layer, tap on that again and clear. And we've got a clear view through now and we can add something through that doorway. So on that basis, I'm going to go and create a new layer, but I'm going to put it underneath layer 1. And I'm going to go back to my colours. I'm going to use the first colour on the middle row and just drag to flood fill. Just gets rid of the white initially. And then I'm going to go to my brushes, organic rainforest brush. I'm going to go in with the next colour on the middle row. I'm going to put the brush size at around 6% and around 70% opacity. And I don't want to completely obliterate that kind of blue colour, but I do want to break it up so there's not as much. It's just some patchy bits of it showing through at the very top. So just a few passes of that will kind of just disrupt, get rid of large sections of it. And we don't really care what comes down in the bottom section because we're going to have some darker colours. Back to my colours. Third colour, I'm going to change brush to the airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to have a 10% size, 10% opacity. And I'm going to start just bringing this in a few times near the bottom and just allowing this to creep up a little bit. We don't need too much of this really. I'm adding it a few times anyway, just in the kind of middle of this doorway, just creeping up a little bit, but not too far. That will do. Probably create a new layer, layer eight. Back to the colors. I'm going to choose this fourth color. Back to my brushes, organic, rainforest. Put it maybe a bit smaller, 3% size. And I don't want it too strong either, so about 30%. And I'm going to start bringing in some of these darker colours now, just creeping in from an edge. Not too much of them. And we've got that colour plus the next colour, the fifth colour, which is a slightly more blue. Turn it down even more, lower on the 2%. And we can just start to drag that across, across in kind of streaks. I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur. I'm going to soften that in to about 5%. Deselect. I might switch brushes to the airbrushing soft brush again. Stay on this fifth color, 10% size, 10% opacity. And I'm just going to allow this to build up in the center, go over it a few times, build it up so it kind of merges with some of these streaks that I've just created. A little bit more. Not too much. Back to my colours. I'll go for the sixth colour along, darker still. Turn it down, lower on the 2% and probably about 30% opacity. We can just start to bring in some streaks. Perhaps 30 is a bit strong. Let's just do it a bit more subtly, 20. And I'm pressing lightly and I'm allowing some little patches and some longer streaks just to cut across. We've got a variety of different kind of cloud textures coming in here now. We're getting closer to what would be the horizon near the ocean and as that happens you get more stretched out cloud formations usually especially in the distance just add a few more patchy shapes in there as well stretched out forms work better and of course this is behind everything else so we don't need to worry about being neat at all which is really great Just backwards and forwards, add some of these streaks across here. Works really nicely. Maybe go in with the next colour, this dark colour. Turn it from 2% to 4 And again, just go over a few times. It's still only at 20% opacity, so it's not the darkest. Okay, I will create another layer. Layer 9. This time I'm going to go... Maybe use this colour on the very end of the bottom row. With the soft brush with an airbrush, I'm going to put it right down to 1%. 
down to about 10% opacity. Zoom in a touch. And I'm just going to use this now to just pick out some kind of, I'm using this kind of emotion, top edge of some more fluffy clouds that have, you know, a different kind of shape. So not so elongated, not so stretched out. These are closer to, and perhaps just have a different kind of quality to them. Perhaps we can go back to this third color on the middle row, take it from 10% up to 20. And we can just subtly bring out some highlights on along this edge too. Not too distinct, not too strong, but a touch more. Put it back down to the 10%. Maybe we could just have a few more textures there in the background too. Again, more stretched out, a little bit more elongated there, and that's fine. Back to our colors, we're gonna use this darkest blue again. Again, with this soft brush, we are gonna put it up from the 1% up to maybe 3%. That's a bit strong, maybe the 2%, 20% opacity, and the bottom edge of that cloud will just make it darker. So we're giving this cloud formation a bit of heft, a bit of weight. If we want to go for something a little darker, we can go for this second colour on the top row, lowest part of two, size about 10% opacity, and just subtly start to build in some darkness here at the bottom of that cloud but i don't want to overdo that just bringing it in lightly is enough and then maybe up to five percent and i can just generally darken up that bottom section a little bit but not too much perhaps that's a little bit too strong then i'm going to go for the second color from right on the bottom row on the middle row rather and just bring that into the bottom section still at the well five percent size about 10% opacity or there-ish. We'll just soften that in to where the sea is gonna go. So that'll do for the sky. We might come back and slightly amend that, but we're gonna move forward. So I'm gonna create a layer above that. Again, crucially, it's all underneath this layer. I'm gonna go to the hard brush, no, the medium hard brush within airbrushing. Go to my colors. I'm gonna use the first color on the middle row. 1% size, 20% opacity. And I'm just gonna draw my horizon line doesn't matter if it's wobbly at all because you can hold it and it should snap and then just try to judge what looks horizontal. If you're not too sure, if you've got a bit lost, you can always go back to the wrench, put on the drawing guide and just see how it compares to a real horizontal line. If you're not happy with it, try that again with that in place. That's a bit better. You can always turn off the drawing guide again. Turn it up a little bit more on the size to 2% and I'm going to put it down to 10% opacity and I'm just going to from that top edge just add some more of this lighter tone downwards. I'm just going to rotate it just because it's easier to do long sweeps when it's at a, a more comfortable angle with a few sweeps of that. Then I'm going to take that layer, put on the alpha lock, go back to my brushes. I'm going to go to the artistic leatherwood brush Tap on the leatherwood brush, I'm going to change the spacing to about 45%. And I'm going to go back in with, well, maybe I'll go for this third from the right. Again, change the angle. I'm going to put it really significantly down to 1% size and pretty low at around 25% opacity. And I'm just going to bring this across. In fact, even that 1% is a bit big, so lower on the 1%. And just bring that across. And it's just going to help bring in some textures in the water there. It's subtle, but I think it does enhance what we've got. That will do. Turn off the alpha lock. You can then go back to my brushes, back to the airbrushing, soft brush, back to my colors. I'm gonna go for the second color from the right on the bottom row, down to 1% size and, well, about 10% opacity feels about right. And I'm gonna zoom in a touch and I'm gonna start adding in some waves, perhaps even lower actually, so lower on the 1%, maybe a touch higher, so we'll put it up to 15%. And we're just creating some kind of little waves there, so they just literally come up to a point almost. Not too exaggerated, but they are there. And then some lines that kind of cut across, maybe a suggestion of something over here as well, here and there, but not too much. You can then switch to the white, which is the fifth colour on the top row 
and then just again rotate same brush same settings maybe even smaller than that one percent and just as it starts to come to the top we can just have some of that white highlighted a little bit more but not let's not overdo it add some of these whiter lines in here as well just move it across subtle details but it will make a difference zoom back out you can see it's only a small thing but it is starting to build in the sense of waves which is exactly what we want maybe just a bit of a division there as well we're going to go and create a new layer we're going to go in with a soft brush why not we're going to change however to the second from the right on or fifth from the left on the bottom row i'm going to put it at two percent size and about 70 percent opacity and i'm going to build in a kind of crashing wave that will peak and come in here and we can just sort of fill this in in the bottom area too so we can increase that up no problem beyond that just to block it in once we're happy we've got that initial shaping i'm going to take that layer put on alpha lock i'm going to go back to my colors i'm going to use some of these other colors so i've got this second from the left on the bottom row still with the soft brush about three percent of uh, size really much lower on the opacity at around 10 percent and i'm just going to start building in but even that feels really strong so i'm going to put that down to five i'm going to build in some of this light color here we've got water that's going to have light shining through it and it's just going to bring out these lovely green colors but we don't want to overdo that okay something like this so we've still got a hint of that darkness near the top and then it quickly sort of disappears out beyond that point as soon as it gets a little bit lower down it's just that thin bit of water there that's raised up that just brings some of that green glow through you can always add to it later but that will do initially go to our layers and create a layer on top of that go to our colors we're going to go for the white on that top row water we'll go for the wet sponge brush it low down at two percent just into the two and about 60 percent opacity and we'll just zoom in a touch and we're going to just tap in and i'm adding texture here so the brush is doing some of the work certainly but i'm also just tapping in to create some more textures along the top edge here in addition to that and let's just perhaps increase the size of the brush up to the top end of two and see what difference that makes and we can just add this along the way as well Perhaps for that, just that peak there, maybe reduce it back down to the lowest part of two, bring it along a little bit more, even down into the 1%, get another smaller peak, and then it just trails off down here as well. And then perhaps just a little bit down here, and then we can just have it kind of blending in with some of the lines that we've already got in place. I'm going to switch brushes, I'm going to go to the spray paint, I'm going to go to the flicks, I'm going to have that with the same white, but maybe around 2% size and 100 percent opacity and we can just zoom in we can add some of these to the mix here we can allow it to flick up and just kind of roughly follow along these areas and just sort of add to the effect largest part of two percent just to add a couple more dramatic things here and there as well nudge slightly down into the one percent and we can just continue that a little bit moving along we don't want to really overdo this but yeah it's just a really nice addition we're going to do more of it lower down also turn it back up to the 3% and just build a little bit more of this in for that point there. I think that works. I'm going to create another layer. And on this layer, we're going to use the old brush within painting. We're going to use the white color still. We're going to put it at the 2% size, about 50% opacity. And we're just going to kind of create this movement, some sweeps, some streaks, and just help create a sense of this wave sweeping up like so you can just scribble it in backwards and forwards a little bit initially and we're going to reduce it down to the one percent and slightly up from the 50 to the 70 zoom in a touch and yeah we can just start to specify some of those lines a little bit perhaps that's a little bit strong so we could always go with maybe the third color 
on the bottom row. Bring in some of these streaks in there as well. Bring them across. Bring that across, a few more here. And just like we did before, we can go with the eraser, set to the, well, maybe the medium brush this time, 1% size, about 40% opacity, and we can just zoom in there a little bit, create some gaps, some ellipses, but they're gonna be quite stretched out. We don't want them to be too obvious. Break it up a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna go in with the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just blur that in slightly. Not too much, just 2%. Zoom out, take a look. Okay, I'm gonna go back in with the airbrushing soft brush, turn it really low down, lower on the 1%, maybe about 10% opacity, and we can just bring some of these streaks in. In fact, we will go really low down on the 1. Perhaps I will also go back to my colors and use the white with that 10% opacity and just bring in more of these streaks. Take some of the shapes that are already there and just, certainly as we come lower down, we can make them kind of merge together bunch together, make more of a feature of them as they come away from that top edge and further down into this region, because they're going to meet a crashing wave down in this lower section. So we can bring some of those streaks, some of those lines together a little bit more. I'm just gonna dissipate out, or perhaps just merge with the top rolling edge of this wave a little bit more. Zoom over here, and some more over here as well. Just add a little bit more clarity. We've got some rough texture in there, but geez, I'm just gonna bring in some slightly more defined streaks, stripes in here as well. We don't need to do too many of them. Easy to do too much. Perhaps we could just take one or two areas and just, rather than just having it completely, as lines swooping, we might have some swirling textures in there. So we're just adding a variety of things in there as well. Not too much. You could always go perhaps in with the smudge tool, set to the medium brush with an airbrushing, 1% size, 80% opacity. And again, we can just, we can push this around, perhaps a bit smaller in fact, 1%. We could always just use this to manipulate these shapes, soften them, push them around, however we feel is going to improve it. I'll come back to this, but we're gonna create another layer, layer 14, and we're going to use perhaps back to the water brushes, the wet sponge again. Go back to our colors, we're gonna use this gray at the very end initially. We're gonna put it at 3% size, 60% opacity, and I'm just gonna swirl in some crashing water in this lower area, just to create some really nice churn in the water. Now we're starting to encroach onto this bottom area, so I suppose we need to go back upwards and we need to start dealing with some of these top layers. So before I'm ready to merge them together and just delete them, I'm going to just double check their impact and their impact in relation to the landscape now, so or the seascape as it as it happens. So I'm going to go to the very top layer, and if I zoom in here, you'll see it's this outer edge, which is just there. I'm going to tap on that layer, tap on it again, put on the alpha lock, and I'm going to go in with the airbrushing soft brush, go to my colors, probably gonna go for something quite light. I'll go for this first color on the middle row, put it up to, well, it doesn't have to be very big, 2% size, about 30% opacity. And I just want to ramp up the light in some of the areas of this shape, just so it contrasts nicely. It kind of shows the impact of some of this light. I think that will work better. Just a hint more of that in that section, for example, not too much more than that. And then I don't really want to change that black layer too much. I'm gonna to go to the layer underneath that, however, which again is a similar shape to that. So on that layer, I'm gonna put on the alpha lock and perhaps just a little less on the strength. I'm gonna put it down to 15. And, and again, I'm just gonna heighten up the intensity of the light in a similar area, but not too much. Maybe I could creep it along a little bit at the top. And I think that just merges it all together a little bit better. Okay, I'm gonna take all of those layers now. Now, it doesn't matter about alpha lock. 
you just take from all of those layer fives and just pinch them together. We've now got all of that on one layer. I'm going to go with the eraser, put the eraser, medium brush with an airbrushing will do. 2% size, 100% opacity, and I'm just going to remove the bottom section. And then I'm just going to straight away just pitch off the, the bottom bit of the doorway there. That's how much I want to be kind of consumed by the seawater, like so. And I'm also going to go to the layer underneath it, and I'm going to go in with the eraser. I'm going to perhaps going to put it on this soft brush, and I'm going to put it at 3% size, 40% opacity, and just start to chip away at some of this now. Now I want a merging point where the kind of background and this foreground comes together. So I'm just creating a little bit of a, an area there where I can just remove some of that. So that base color actually was on this layer 11. We have the alpha lock on that layer, so I need to go back to that layer, turn off the alpha lock, back to my brushes, soft brush will do, second color from the right in the bottom row, and turn the opacity up. Doesn't really matter what you turn it to. Just blot it in there, and we can start to see we've got a really nice sort of blending merging of those layers together now. That gives us a better context. We want to go back to the layer 14 where we had the crashing wave, back to the water, the wet sponge, and we were using this gray color. So we can just get a better sense of where it's coming in, how much it's crashing in, and so on. So that feels a bit better. Okay, and then I'm um, still with the same brush, the wet sponge, I'm going to move from that gray. I need to go to maybe to the first color in the middle row, jumping around a little bit with colors, and that's okay. So about 2% size, we need it quite low at around 30%. And we'll just bring, in fact, that's a bit too low. Let's put that up to 50%. And we're just starting to build in some nice contrast now along that top edge. We'll go in with the spray in just a moment, but we need to create some highlights. So they're going to bulk of it. Perhaps we'll turn that up even more to 4%. Tap it in, get a variety of texture in there as well. 2% size again, and just vary up the size and the, the weight of that texture a little bit. And I'm just going to go in with maybe 4% size and just mush that together a little bit more. Just big sweeping movements across there, like so. And then go back to the actual white, 2% size, 50% opacity. And this is going to be the strong highlight now, so maybe even smaller, really the lowest end of 2%. And work along that top edge, create that strong, bright highlight to contrast. And that's going to give us that nice contrasty colour. Go back to the spray paint flicks, 3% size, 100% opacity. And again, we can just vary that up. So 2%, 3%, try that out. Top end of two, some more of this spray in here as well. Perhaps you could turn it down from 100% to 50%. Just really want to add more and more of this in here. We really get a nice sense of this churn and spray coming in. Back to the water, wet sponge with the white. Zoom in a touch, 2% size, 50% opacity. And we just need to be a little bit more careful now. We're imagining like the kind of fluffy shapes, almost of clouds. So the highlights is just going to kind of select or bounce off those top edges in places. So we're just creating a series of bumps where it's just collecting along that edge. Perhaps we need to give it something of a shadow too. So we need to go back to our colors, perhaps the second color on the top row. And we also need to give it, in order to increase the sense that it's Got a real mass. We're going to have to create a shadow in, in addition. Maybe move on to the third colour, a bit lighter. Increase the opacity, maybe I'll put the opacity about 40% with that same colour. And we can just creep that shadow up in areas too, just like we had the highlights going upwards or downwards from the top rather, this can creep upwards. So avoid the edges in a sense, you're creating almost 
the opposite effect. So wherever you've got a strong highlight underneath it, building up to it, you might create some shadow in the lower section. So here's a highlight and then just on the other side of it, you create a shadow. Here's a highlight, so you create a shadow, create a bit of a shadow here, and you're just playing around with those two opposing kind of features. Quite a nice textured brush, so it doesn't require a great deal of effort, I would say, in some ways. Just a bit of time, trial and error it, see what starts to look right for you. Go back to our colours, maybe go in with some warmth, the second colour in the middle row. Add a bit of warmth to this, it is more foreground, so just to bring it forward. And sometimes it's necessary to add warmer colours. Perhaps we'll even go for the third colour, brush that in a bit. So I'm not being very specific, I'm just allowing it to lightly scribble across the surface there. I'm going to create a new layer on top. I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to add. You see the little A appears, so you tap on there and then you can change the blend mode. So we're on add. Stay on this warm colour, use the wet sponge, zoom in a touch, lowest part of 2% size, 40% opacity. And yeah, we'll just bring in a bit more of this now, just to really ramp up the brightness. Perhaps we'll even go to the top end at 2%. And this will really push that bright glow. Even sometimes when you're using white, for some reason it, it just never seems to quite capture that glow. But when you change the blend mode to add, it really does intensify a light glow. I'm really in love with using that as a blend mode, and you, you generally see that in almost all of my tutorials these days. It just has become such a, an important part of my workflow. So I do recommend you experiment with that. Try and find ways that you can incorporate it. I'm just using it to ramp up the glow, bring out some highlights of this water churn. I think on the same layer, I'm gonna go in with the soft brush. I'm gonna go for a nice blue coral on the mid, end of the middle row. I'm going to put it down to 2% size and or really quite low at about 5% opacity. And I just want to bring in perhaps a bit stronger. In fact, maybe I'll put it up to 10. Some of the luminosity into the bottom area here just before it merges with that crashing wave. So I'm just scribbling it in a little bit. I feel like this bottom area needs a bit more of that light before it blends here. And I'm just sweeping across, just scribbling it in. It's not overly considered, quite easy. And I think with the soft brush and maybe the second color on the bottom row, 3% size, 5% opacity, I'm just going to ramp up this area a little bit too, just to hint more of it along here. Not too much. You can easily go too much with this, so I'm just adding a hint of it in there. Just a touch more, I think goes a long way. I almost feel like I've done a bit too much on the highlight, so we can always go back into some of that with the eraser, put it on the soft brush, 3% size, 40% opacity, it's just dial back some of it so it's more impactful where we want it to be. So it's not absolutely everywhere, we want it more just in this region perhaps, I think that works a bit better. Perhaps I will go in with the third colour, and still the soft brush, 3% size, 5% opacity, and well, We've got a lot of light here and it feels like it needs more in the sky. So I'm going to match it in some of these areas in the sky too. I'm doing all of this on one layer, layer 11, with the blend mode set to add. I think it's just helping bringing in the drama. I do want some of it more in there, but not too much. So just use it judiciously. Find the right balance. Find what works for what you've got. Okay, back to layer 14 and in with the soft brush perhaps, go in with the third color on the top row, 2% size, 30% opacity, zoom in just a little bit, and I feel like I just need to sculpt this bottom edge of this kind of crashing water, just a hint more, not too much, but yeah, just a touch, and maybe even go back a color to the second one, turn it down, lowest part of 2%, yeah, and just add a hint more of that in there as well. I don't want to overdo that. I don't really want to make it look too chunky. Okay, so that I'm happy enough with. We do need to bring some extra texture into this whole kind of frame area, I think. So we'll go up to this layer one, go in with the soft brush, with an airbrushing. We'll change to a lighter color. So perhaps we'll go in with the third color initially, turn it up to 5% size, 30% opacity, 
And let's just start to build in some of these light colors. Now we've got one or two anomalies here that I'm noticing when I'm doing that. That isn't a problem. That will be attached to the layer above. We'll go on there, erase it. If there's anything that just crops up that is not what we want, just go in and remove it. Then we can go back to layer one and carry on. I think that 30% is a bit strong, so let's put that down to 15. And we can just sweep in more of this light in this section too. So I'm just bringing it in. You can see already it's just bringing those two areas together so much better. Really works to our advantage. I think I might just bring some more of that light up into this section too. And this section maybe change to the fourth color, down from five to three percent. And well, we're on 15, perhaps we should move it more subtly down to five percent. And we can just start to build in the impact of this a bit more gradually. I certainly want all the lights coming through here to really concentrate the eye on the highlights in this area. We're definitely going to have more light here. We can bring some streaks of that in here. That's not to say it will escape everywhere else. So it might just bounce around a little bit and have some areas up here, some areas up here. It can affect everywhere. So I'm going to put it up to 5% size again. Just I don't want to neglect other areas where it could have a bit of an impact, but obviously I want to concentrate more of it down here. So down in this area, probably need to create a new layer above it. So now we're on layer 12, which in terms of the layer numbers, they're all over the place. Don't worry about that. All you need to know is that it's underneath the door frame, but it's above this one, sandwiched in the middle. So we're going to go in with the soft brush, with an airbrush, and we're going to turn it right down to 1% and about 40% opacity or so. We'll go in with the white, why not? And we're going to be really quite bold. So from this door frame, we're just going to build in some lines like this. We could turn it down, 15, and we could just build in a load more too. Some little ripples, some little waves. Yeah, some little kind of ripples and waves, just add some nice texture in here. Don't need to overthink it. I mean, 15 is still perhaps even quite strong. So if you want to do it more subtly, build it in gradually. 5% is, is a pretty good number for this. Turn it all the way up to the, the edge of that crashing wave. Some bits are just going to stand out more. So you don't want it as completely uniform lines. You can have some bits that you can go over and just create some highlights in some areas more than others. And then as you come down into this area, you're going to have some bits that are definitely picking up the light more than areas. So you can create some little ripples and they're going to catch the light more. So perhaps as we come over into this area, we can keep it low at the 5%. We could even change it from the white, maybe go for something more like the third color on the bottom row. And we're just going to have subtler ripples cutting through. So we don't want it to be devoid of textures and things, but it's going to be more subtle. Now do leave some gaps. You don't want to completely fill it in with texture. You need to have some areas that are just a bit more empty compared to others. You can see I'm not really agonizing over this at all. It's quite loose. Especially for these subtler details. When we go over it with the brighter white, we need to be a little bit more sparing and a bit more considered. But when we're using this more subtle version of this texture, you can really just get it in there. Don't be too hesitant. You can always add more of it into certain areas if you just want to create a bit more clarity. I'm not doing anything special with this texture and really just creating kind of dashes and curves and just zooming out, looking at it, seeing what impact that has and just taking it from there. But you can just bring this texture around. You can keep adding more and more of it. And then when we come into the center area, obviously we're going to use some brighter colors in a moment, but yeah, just laying the groundwork, lots of swirls, lots of lines, lots of lovely bits of texture. I think that's overall working pretty well. So we're going to go from there to the white again, 1% size. And just on some of these, not too much, we're just going to bring out some white highlights. Now it's still at 5%, maybe it could be a bit bolder at 10% now. 
and anything that creeps into this region could really have a stronger highlight. So take your time, build in some of these stronger whites. Maybe even turn it down to the lower on the 1%. We're really at the bottom end, small as we can go for the canvas size that we've chosen. Just a few extra highlights on the edges, but not as many. Bring one or two of them down into this foreground kind of lower region as well. I think I'll just go back to the third color on the bottom row again. We're going to use it at the 10% size uh, opacity, top end of the 1%, and I'm just going to add a few more highlights that are just creeping up and around. Just a few more lines in here, in and around the door frame, not too many. Back to the white, just one or two more touches. I'm gonna to put the opacity really quite strong at 30%. Opacity or the size down to the lowest part of one. And I just wanna get these highlights in. I need to have some super strong highlights in there, in places, just to really set that contrast. And also set the kind of shapes of them out a little bit more. Just gonna go back to layer 11, I had the add blend mode and I feel like really neglected to add that glow to the top edge of some of this as well so just going back in adding hints more of that glow to that top edge back to layer 12 last touch soft brush on maybe the second color on the bottom row five percent size five percent opacity and I just think that everything around it is a little bit dark maybe even bigger actually up to the ten percent I just want to add a little bit more of a highlight coming in here. Not too much, maybe just a little bit more in here as well. Okay, I'm going to leave this tutorial here at this point. I hope you've enjoyed following along. If you have had a go, make sure to share it with me at various different social medias. The link down in the video description. And if you want to have a go at another of my tutorials, then I really recommend the landscape in a jar. I know it's one of the ones that I really enjoyed doing myself. And other than that, I hope to catch you back here soon. Bye for now. See you later.